Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. We are here to talk about gear. So the item on the chopping block this week is this visor that I've got on here. A little bit of background on the Arai Pro Shade system. Arai is a lot more safety oriented than some other companies, so they are not really willing to put an internal visor in there, like a Shoei or something like that, and cut away some of the foam up here because they want to keep their safety rating where it's at and not compromise anything for the luxury of shade. So usually your option is to either run a clear shield with a pin lock or you can go to a tinted shield but none of the tinted shields for the VAS system that I have seen offer a pin lock. After having a few helmets with visors that did have pin locks in them, I gotta admit I'm a little bit spoiled to that. No fog when you're breathing thing, it's kind of nice. I've been riding with this thing for a little while. Instead of giving a first impression, I wanted to ride with it enough to give my honest opinions on a review. And I would say, aside from that price point, it's really not that bad. For the base system with the smoke visor, you're talking about spending another $85. Now the smoke visor itself is pretty cool. You, you get your regular tint, but if you're like me and you want to throw a color at it, like I really like their blue mirror. In order to get my blue mirror on here, I had to order another visor, which is just almost as much as the whole assembly is. So that part's a little weird to me that the pricing is so obtuse. So as I was alluding to, the main way to get a pin lock set up along with a shade on an Arai helmet is going to be through their Arai Pro Shade system. That's what I got on right here. So one of the nifty things about this is you get your drop down shield except it's external instead of internal, which is actually kind of neat. Right now we've got a good patch of clouds over us and it's a little bit dim. The tinted visor is still fine, but for this example, here's where it's cool. Boom, no more tin advisor in your face. You still got the pin lock, crystal clear by the way, except for that bug that just hit it. But with the shade kicked up, it gives you a little bit of a peak. And the peak that it gives you is not very opaque because it's your tin advisor. So there's still some light that gets through there, but it comes in handy if you're needing to block like a little spot of light. The sun is coming out from behind that cloud. Things get a little bright. I want to throw some shade back on the situation. It's got a little rubber strip up here. If you grab that, pull forward and then pull it down clicks right down into place, you got your shade back. At first I thought it was a little weird that the tinted visor does not come all the way to the bottom. It leaves this little gap around the sides and, and the bottom edge. Why, why not just do a full covering? I haven't seen anywhere from Arai. It may be in their literature somewhere, but a lot of people reference it as being so that you can see your gauges clearly without a tint. And as it happens to fall on this bike in my riding position, I can see the gauge is clear without the tent, and it also rolls up just right so I can see both of my mirrors without the tent. Honestly, not that big a deal, but it's just a little quality of life thing. It gives you that nice, clear, bright picture of whatever's riding your butt. One of the few bad reviews that I did see on the Pro Shade was somebody saying that the visor scratched pretty easy, like the, the tent visor scratched pretty easy. And I saw that from more than one person. My personal experiences here, whenever I'm cleaning mine, I always use a microfiber towel, no matter if it's a clear visor, a smoke visor, a mirrored visor, whatever. I always treat them the same. I always just kind of like huff my breath at it to get that little layer of fog on there and then wipe off whatever bug guts or finger smudges or whatever is on the visor. Your mileage may vary, but for me, scratching is not an issue pretty easy to install it goes on like a regular visor does and I've got that in my pad adjustment and visor swap video when it comes time to swap the shade if you want to change colors or say you do manage to scratch yours up I believe the instruction said to lift the pro shade to the highest position before you try to remove it I did that the first time and I actually found it was way easier to leave the pro shade down so for removal there's a little tab at the bottom of the covers you want to push it in and then use that serrated surface that's on the outside to slide the little tab up. Once you get that off both sides, if you go to lift the Pro Shade, it's actually going to pop itself off of there, which is pretty handy. I found installation to go a little bit easier installing it in the down position rather than the up position. And there all you have to do is kind of line it up. Once you get pretty close, it actually snaps on a little of the way. And then if you push it down and back at a little bit of an angle, the thing clips right into place. And then you can put those little hinge covers on there, push them down, and then they lock right in. 
The pro shade does have a couple of positions. You got your all the way down, you got a little like a half cock thing. So you've got a little more clear vision, but the peak is still pretty low. So if the sun's getting low on you, you can use that to kind of help block out the sun. Then you got that position. It's about in the same position and shape as like if you're wearing a ball cat, the, the bill of the hat would be about where that's at. So a question that I couldn't really find an answer to when I was looking at buying one is what kind of noise does it give at highway speeds with the visor up like a peak? And it is very minimal. You do pick up a little bit of a hum from it, just from the wind going between it and the helmet, I think. It's definitely nothing that I could even pick up on the mic to show you guys in the video. So yeah, for my final verdict, definitely worth the purchase if you can afford to slap one on there. Just for the versatility of the thing, it's really nice. If you found this video helpful, smack that like button. If you would, give us a subscribe if you want to see more gear reviews, moto vlogs, stuff like that. I get around, try to put up a video once a week, sometimes two if I'm reviewing a product like this. Hope you guys have a great day, stay safe out there, and we'll catch you next time. Peace.